I'm Janet Axton. I'm the Heritage Manager of St Ives Archive, which opened to the public in 1996. We collect the history of all aspects of St Ives. Earlier this year, a visitor contacted us because her mother um, had worked in a company called Florms, which made clothes in the 1940s and 1950s, and she wanted to know what we knew about it. When we contacted her, we explained that we did know a little bit about the company, and from then on, the whole project mushroomed because she became very interested in all that we had. We discovered that Florms was owned by John Lewis's, and they have the most fantastic archive, and they were able to provide us with information about the people who worked there. Uh, we were really pleased that the archivist, Judy Faraday, was able to come down to join us for our workshop and she brought with her quite a lot of original documents, including fantastic minute books of the meetings of the directors of Florns over the years. And in fact, they sent us a list of all the women in 1958 who were instant hives working in their factory. There were lots of machinists, and in the document that I've got here, which relates to an article in one of the local house magazines, it says that there are 81 partners employed with over seven years' membership. This is in 1958, and that they've got a waiting list of girls who want to join coming straight from school at the age of 15. So it was obviously a very well-loved institution within St Ives, and a lot of ladies wanted to come and work there. And we contacted all the women, as many of them this summer who are still alive, and invited them to a tea party in June. Uh, we expected about 20 or 25 people, and in the event we had over 50 people, and many of them hadn't seen each other for ages. It was a very exciting occasion. And we asked them whether they would like to be part of a bigger workshop where we could learn much more about them and the work that they did. But Florence wasn't the only company making textiles in St Ives. Uh, ever since 1926, we'd had the Crusade Silk Factory situated in an old pilchard cellar, which was now empty down by the island. And that was taken over by two Yorkshiremen, Tom Heron, the managing director, and Alex Walker, who was a brilliant designer. He was an artist and he turned his paintings into designs. And in this factory, beautiful silk clothes were made. They were printed by hand, hand block prints, to beautiful designs by Alec Walker in all sorts of different colourways. But unfortunately, Tom Heron had to leave and the company uh, continued, um, limped along until 1939 uh, when it went bankrupt. And we've discovered that there was a connection between Crusade and the managers of Florence. When Florence was bombed uh, in London in 1940, they moved the workforce down to St Ives because they knew that there was a, a workforce of women uh, who were used to making clothes, which was very unusual for Cornwall. Florns opened up in a separate factory, but just down the road from where the Crusade silk factory had been. And the factory itself was taken over by a company called Hamptons, but because of the war, they organised for camouflage nets to be made. Nets had been made uh, by the fishermen for years, because fishing was the major industry. Every woman and daughter knew how to make nets. So they made the nets at home and then they brought them to the factory. And they were then converted into camouflage nets by putting uh, strips of material through the mesh. And then these nets would be put over tanks um, and other things to hide them. They made a number of other things at Hampton's um, that, to do with war work, and in fact they worked 24 hours. There were three shifts, and the women even worked the night shift. When the war was over, Hampton's took it back over again, and they made mattresses. 
but soon after they began to make clothes um, and overalls and other garments. And then Florence, in, a few years later, was taken over by a company called Berkatex, and then it closed down and they moved into the factory that Hamptons had occupied. But by 1977, there was no requirement for home-produced garments like that, and there was no work, and it closed down. So it, it was a really difficult time because there was a lot of unemployment. But I should say that the, um, those series of companies really uh, provide an enormous amount of employment, especially for women for those 40 years. Uh, just to give you an example, girls would leave school at 14 and just before the war there weren't any jobs at all and so doing war work at the factory um, suddenly produced jobs for a group of young women who would never have been able to be employed. So we must remember how important these businesses were to the economy of the town. Our workshop was very well organised. We advertised it widely and also had written to uh, the people who we, we'd invited to the tea party earlier in the year. When they arrived, we asked them whether they had been involved with any of the companies and if they had, we gave them a name tag so that we'd know who they'd worked for and so we'd be able to talk to them. We asked them also to bring in anything that they might have any memorabilia from their time there. We had some knitting needles, photographs, pieces of material. We did a number of displays, one on Florence, one on Crusade, one on Hampton's factory during wartime. We also did a timeline to show how the different uh, companies interrelated with each other. We had a film show of a lot of uh, photographs from our collection. We also had a slideshow of images of many of the designs, the crusade designs, which are held at the Penley Gallery and Museum in Penzance. We talked to uh, the women and also we organised trying to knit a string vest, which was one of the things that was done at Hampton's factory. My name is Mary Quick and I helped my grandfather when he made nets during the war, mainly by filling the needles, which was a great help because they had to stop making the net if they had to go and fill the needles. So usually the children would fill the needles and then they could carry on. But um, it was a very dirty business, really. Sisal leaves a lot of dust. And some people made nets in their houses, but it was dirty. But my grandfather was in his loft, his net loft, and he made his nets there. It was good fun compared to what life seems to be like in these days. And especially at Christmas, we always made, like, uh, we would do certain things at Christmas that was fun, although we were still working. We had to learn to do the stitching and how to do uh, certain things on the garment. Some were easier to make than others. I mean, if we made uh, evening dresses, they would take longer. And, of course, with the different materials, you had to be very careful that you didn't mark them or get oil or anything on them. And then I went upstairs in the big room and was on the machines making dresses. We enjoyed it, really, because it was different kinds of dresses, complicated and, and easy ones and all. It was a factory down the bottom of the Portmere, and I went there when I was 14. And I wasn't very happy on the machines. I was, was up top working. I went downstairs on what we call the finishing end. That is doing the hems, the buttonholes, the plackets, sewing all the prestige, sewing on bows and everything like that. And I loved it. We're very lucky because Joe McIntosh, who's a St. Ives designer, 
um, is working on the camouflage net. Uh, she is collecting together the memories of many of the women that we've been uh, getting over the months. A number of them have been interviewed in advance. And she's going to put their memories onto strips of calico and these will be woven into the resulting net that's going to be made. Hi, we're the Three Bells. I'm Betty. I'm Gail. I'm Dorothy. And we're going to sing Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy like you've never heard it before. He was a famous trumpet now from out Chicago way. He had a boogie style and now I know Scoop Bay. He was a tough man and had a scrap. But then his number came up and he was down with the draft. He's in the army now. In the middle of the, uh, the workshop, we were visited by three young women, and they sing songs from the 1940s and wartime songs, and sang three songs, and they were in rather lovely 1940s floral print dresses, and their wonderful 1940s hairstyles, and they sing in close harmony. And they were absolutely marvellous, brought back wonderful memories of the music of that time. And the interesting thing is that a lot of these uh, women still live in the area, but they don't always keep in contact with each other. And we met a number of them who ha were meeting up with friends that they hadn't seen for 20, 30, 40 years. So it was a marvellous uh, reunion. And they were able to have tea and marvellous cakes and enjoy the day. And we were overwhelmed with the numbers who turned up. A lot of people think that there is no community anymore in St Ives. We don't believe that at the archive and this goes to prove that the community is actually very strong. You just need to go out and find it. We had a lovely time. We were all together and we enjoyed it. wasn't like proper, we worked, but we enjoyed it because we had good company, like a family, my girl. Like, we were just like one family. Really lovely. Lovely.